You know, I was hoping for a cliffhanger. Well, it kind of is, but uh, I mean, you weren't that wrong. I mean, they're obviously up to something. Welcome to the Captain's Chair episode 6, I think, or 5, 6. I think it's the right number, our conclusion of uh, Star Trek Discovery Reviews for the first season. If you haven't caught up so far, feel free to watch our other episodes and uh, we kind of sum it up the entire season over the last few episodes that we've been doing this. Uh, we hope to continue this journey through Star Trek. Hope. Yep. Uh, log I mean logging our trip to the Star Trek universe in the future. And uh, listen, um, as far as Star Trek Discovery is concerned, we're definitely going to continue these the next season. But until then... When's the next season? Well, you know? uh, well uh, this first season aired in uh, October. September or October, yeah. so hopefully by the time summer ends we'll know more when it's going to air. I've, I can't do it. Uh, I mean, we, we sang praises to this show pretty much since we started doing this. And even while we were watching it, was, we were like, this show is so good. I mean, really, any Star Trek fan should be satisfied with this. I know there are people who aren't for various reasons, namely because uh, one of the main reasons is Klingons don't look like Klingons, which is one of the topics we haven't actually talked about in this show. And it's one of my favorite parts of the show because the first episode starts off with Klingons. And I don't know, man, even if you're not sure like who Klingons are or never seen them before, the first thing that pops to mind when you see that scene that starts the show off is these Klingons. At least it was to me, because they didn't look like Klingons, but they were talking like... Well, it sounded Klingonese, so, you know, to me it was like, these dudes look amazing. I mean, they don't look anything like I would have expected them to, but they look amazing. That's the thing about technology, it actually allows you to give detail to the character that you previously weren't able to. Previously, your, your Klingon had the forehead thing, but that's about it, and that's how you knew he was a Klingon. Now... Well, with the exception of... They there was went one more in-depth yeah. with their looks. Well, as far as Klingon looks goes, um, there was a few exceptions in the show, in the original series and in one of the movies. I think it was the sixth movie. Uh, and they actually looked pretty much human. Uh, the actor who played the Klingon, I think he was the villain. I haven't seen the movie, but I'm definitely going to watch it sometime this year, I hope. But he said that because I watched this documentary with where he appeared on, and he was like, uh, "I'm not gonna do the whole forehead thing." I was like, "I want to look, you know, I want to look like me. I want when people see me, I want them to know that I'm a Klingon, but at the same time see me too. I don't want to put a mask on it." And in the show, there was a few in the original series. There was a few instances where Klingons really looked human. Because, I don't know, maybe makeup was too be you know, too expensive, maybe it required too much time, and the show, I mean, the ho I mean, just trying the show, I watched a documentary with, of, with Leonard Nimoy, and Nimoy, before he passed away, his son started recording, it, and they continued out, but it's like, just the writing on that show just took a lot of time, and so I don't think they were necessarily prepared to do all the makeup stuff, even though a few episodes have... There, uh, there's one episode with an Andorian and a Telluride that really like look, you know, they have a whole mask thing, the whole makeup thing, and I mean just, I mean, I think simplest thing to do is, you know, Vulcans are probably the simplest because all you need is, you know, straight eyebrows and stuff like that. But in one yes. of the episodes of the Next Generation, you know, when, no, it was Deep Space Nine. Deep Space Nine, they go back in time to the 23rd century. There's an episode with Captain Kirk, and. I, they pretty much green screen it, okay, and <laughs> it's fun to watch, but it's uh, one of the characters, uh, I think it was uh, Jadzia Dax asks Worf, you know, what happened to the Klingons, you know, and Worf has this look on his face, we don't like talking about it with outsiders. So the whole argument about Klingons not looking Klingons, obviously those guys went through an evolution of some kind or another it's over point, yeah. the centuries that... I mean, due the, to the time that the show was made at, in the beginning and then how it evolved 
over the years, you know, and the technology evolving in the, you know, in the time between the shows being made, I think it all culminated in what we got in Discovery, and I thought it was pretty cool. So I did. I mean, at I no mean, point do you look at them and like, are those Klingons? Like, you know, they're Klingons. And they speak like Klingons too. Oh, yeah. I mean, anybody who's familiar with them knows that. So, and anybody who's not, or at least heard of them, watches the show for the first time. He's gonna figure out their Klingons. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And you know, they still have bridges. So, you know, I mean. Yeah. They don't really necessarily have, you know, all the hair and facial hair, so yeah, but who knows what they went through, you know, we, we don't know. So hopefully, I mean, I'm hoping one day we definitely find out, but until then, I mean, let's just, you know, let's just roll with what we have and just enjoy what we have, because if we look up, you know, into small details like that, that aren't necessarily, you know, game changing mm -hmm. for the show and for yeah. the Star Trek, you know, franchise in general. Like it, it does. Like this show is amazing to say the least. It's a Star Trek Agreed. show Completely through agree. and through. And this last episode uh, continues off where we left with the last one. Uh, the crew of Star of USS Discovery goes to Kronos, and uh, they were able to transport Discovery into one of the caverns and they try I mean they go around uh, what would you say uh, scouting the area right and they go into one of the one part of the planet that actually doesn't have necessarily just Klingons living on it this was news to me because I always expected the Klingon homeworld to only house Klingons but it doesn't at this point in time it also has the Orions who are a big part of uh, Star Trek lower and they're always this big part of uh, Deep Space Nine and even the uh, Star Trek Enterprise series we get to see and even in the original series there's uh, one point uh, where this being uh, pretty much captures uh, Kirk and the crew and I thought oh, no or maybe Captain Pike I think it was even Captain Pike that uh, basically captured them and they held them hostage, which ties into the whole thing with the uh, this episode, which is pretty cool too. Is yeah, with Enterprise. Yeah, at the end. But uh, listen, they they try they go along and they scout the area, try to find information about this shrine that they're supposed to you basically know base their this, operations yeah. on. And basically, the secret mission is to blow up Kronos, even though they're and nobody knows about it. Until except the, the captain. Except the captain and the captain. And us and everybody else who watches the show course. who actually figure out what's going on. But yeah, I mean... A couple of episodes back. True, but still, you know, I, I didn't necessarily expect it. Like, I, I didn't find... the most dude, sense. I wasn't surprised. I mean, you he... gave a Terran Empress captain's chair on a mission to go to Kronos. You kind of know she's blowing it up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. Uh, but uh, listen, I, I didn't necessarily expect it, but I wasn't surprised by him because it is the Empress of the Terran Empire. But and if you want to blow up a planet, who better to do, do it, it than exactly. somebody who doesn't share the <laughs> Starfleet principles? Yeah, and the whole thing surprising about me, I mean it wasn't necessarily surprising because it is a matter of survival for the Federation, but I'm glad that it came around. Uh, yep. With Michael Burnham actually flipping the tables on the Federation, it's like we can't do this, you know. It's like when I yeah, mutineered, yeah, when I mutineered, I mean, I did, I, I was wrong, and now you're doing pretty much the same thing. And to me, I don't think she was necessarily wrong, but you know, it's like I always support Burnham simply because to me, she made the right decision. Okay, oh, yeah. so I mean, I mean, you know, it's hard to beat a good explosion, but still. Listen, man. When you have Klingons coming at you and there's and diplomacy isn't working, the only thing left to do is either run away or shoot them. So I mean, and blow them up. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you don't have to blow them up. I but it's Federation doesn't usually do that. They will either leave you without weapons or stranded because they'll blow up your engines. That's one of these. They're depending on who they're dealing with. Usually, when Klingons are in question, they'll disable their weapons first. So. Makes sense. They are Klingons after all. Exactly. So, and I'm glad that uh, one of our questions uh, from the last, for the last episode that we talked about, is what happens to Michael Burnham. Uh, does she get 
her record well, expunged, gets, yeah. does she get her rank back? And both of those things do happen. Yeah. Uh, we get to win. And don't get Medal of Honor. Yeah, and we get to see the Federation Medal of Honor being awarded for the first time, I think, in the uh, show history. Uh, I may be wrong on that one, but my memory is flimsy, even though I watch pretty much every episode of Star Trek there is. Uh, but Some of them <laughs> multiple times. Hey, man. I'm not judging. I'm not judging. Voyager is still my favorite show, man. Uh, but whatever, man. Uh, seriously, I enjoyed this episode, and uh, when they and I mean just the episode ending with that. I'm not gonna say a twist, but it's really like they made a diplomatic solution with the Klingons. They were able to unite the whole 24 houses, which were in disorders, pretty much. Which is gonna lead to war later on, but hey. Yeah, but for time so, being, yeah. things Today, are peaceful. No and more. We also discovered that the uh, Saru is not going to be captain anymore. He was no, only the, the captain. Discovery is on its way to Vulcan to pick up its new captain. Which begs the question, who's the new captain? Could it be a Vulcan? It could. But here's the thing. Technically, they have to cast the captain. So we should keep an eye on the recent uh, casting news portraying to the Discovery. Yeah, but is he gonna be a Vulcan or a human? That's why I don't think who's gonna act him. I just think, do you think it's gonna be a Vulcan? I hope it's a Vulcan. It'd be fun if it's a Vulcan. <sighs> Has a Vulcan ever been permanently captain of a Starfleet vessel? As far as I know, no. But listen, it doesn't. Listen, usually when we see any ship on any of the Star Trek shows that belongs to Federation, that is an Earth vessel, it usually has human crew in it and human captain, simply because I think it's easier to cast a human being than it is, you know, to make... I don't know, if it's just once in a lifetime, they're gonna do it like... You know, they're not gonna bother with extra makeup and stuff like that, unless they absolutely have to. But, if it's gonna be an ongoing thing, I want... Vulcans are easy to do. Makeup wise, I think. Oh, yeah, you got the ears. I'm, dude, I'm not an expert, but you know. You should be. Fairly easy. <laughs> it should be easier, you know, than yeah. doing a clean gun. There even should be some do... outfields lying around. Yeah. So, I wouldn't be surprised if we do get a Vulcan captain. Because, it, I, I mean, it, there's probably humans on Vulcan. So, they might be going in there, you it's... know. There might be some kind of a trade thing, you know, where a Starfleet. Uh, Listen. Personnel went to Vulcan for some training or whatever. It's all, and that's where the captain is. But at the same time, it could be a Vulcan. It is Federation. Yeah. So Starfleet is differ. I mean, we differentiate between Starfleet and Federation simply because Starfleet belongs to planet Earth, not necessarily to every other planet that yeah. is a member of the Federation. Federation is. Of course, that's why we have Vulcan races. vessels, and you have Betazoid vessels, and you have. Andorian vessels, that's why we keep hearing it, because they all have their own vessels, but it's not unusual for members of the Federation to... There was, uh, I don't know if it was on DS9 or Voyager or somewhere, where, maybe it was TNG too, but uh, basically what happens once you finish your course in the Starfleet Academy, you're sent on a ship, to serve and it can either be usually you know it's some smaller ship sometimes if you're lucky if you're one of the lucky cadets it'll be a ship like Enterprise or Voyager or whatever but sometimes uh, apparently it is possible to be sent off on a Klingon ship it is possible to be even though they don't necessarily show it in the show yeah. all too often you know because Klingons usually stick to Klingons and Andorians stick to Andorians you know and stuff like that and sometimes you'll see you know, Bolians or Betazoids on, and Vulcans on uh, star sh on starship Starfleet vessels too. So it's really you know depends on what they want to do. So we might get a Vulcan. Cut. I wouldn't be surprised, man. And personally, I don't. <sighs> I'd welcome because of dude, yeah, but because of how Vulcans are. I mean, if you watched one episode of Star Trek and you saw a Vulcan, you know how they all function. And same goes for Klingons. So it's like to me. You just, dude, I have no idea how that's gonna work, man. I mean, I would love to see it, but I don't necessarily want to see it. 
No, I, I mean, if you put a Klingon captain, you know he's going to shoot oh. first and then <laughs> go crazy. home. Because not nobody's really. going to be allowed, really, allowed to not answer not the questions. If he's on the Starfleet vessels, not necessarily. But, you know, Vulcan's going to... Klingon gonna, vessel, a whole different thing, though. Vulcan's going to talk first and then talk some more and then hopefully talk some more. Come to a logical conclusion. Exactly. And that's so what frightens me, the logical conclusions, man. That's because... Because human captains, they think on the go. They're not going to stop and logically think about a solution. They're just going to do it. Sometimes, okay, sometimes they will. Sometimes they will. But most times they won't. They're just going to... They're going to wing it. Definitely. They like to think on their feet. Yeah. That's what the captains usually do. In exactly. Start... So that's why, you know, you want a human captain just because sometimes it's that quick thinking that... It goes, yeah, it goes all the way from Kirk to Picard to Riker to Janeway, even yeah. to Cisco and uh, Captain Archer too. Exactly. So, yeah, so it's, having a Vulcan might be fun for the show, but it, it you be, have no idea how would that would actually turn out. Because you said in the la dude, in last few uh, episodes we keep kept saying that you don't see Saru as the captain. Uh, the only part is we are, were able to agree, though, that we don't see Saru as a captain during the war, though. I, I agreed with that, but after the war, I, I, I could have seen him as captain, okay? But I would... I, I don't know, man. I, I think I would rather I, see Burnham as captain. I definitely would so like see thing Burnham as captain, but Saru is like... Okay, he was captain when, you know, everything happened, so yeah, he took on... He was the first officer, so you know he was acting captain. Just the whole thing doesn't long term. It doesn't sit well with me. Like, okay, he can be a number one, even though at this point with her rank back and everything, I want to see Burnham as number one. I think she's gonna be. I think Burnham's gonna be and number one because until the point where she got her rank restored, she was only a specialist, which isn't yeah. usually something that we see as a rank in Star Trek series. To me, it was more of a fantasy genre thing where yeah, you have this. But Saru, or whatever. I don't see him as a long-term captain. Like maybe on some smaller ship doing some like you know research exploration. I still study. think he's gonna be on board the uh, Discovery. Though. Oh yeah, yeah. I think he's wide apart of everything that's going on, and he has its own way of thinking that's unique to him. Yeah, and his race. And it brings a certain something to the show. Definitely. That man. I think. I think you can leave him off the show, but I think you'd, uh, you'd sense be, it. Yeah, definitely. You'd be yeah. like, you know, you, you're missing that one piece and he provides it. So he's vital part of what's happening at Discovery. Like I said in the last episode, he grows on you, man. Yeah. Literally. But I still wouldn't want him as my captain. Just doesn't see well with me. Between him and, let's say, the, the alleged supposed Vulcan, I'd rather have Saru. Well, you have no idea who the supposedly alleged Vulcan we is. Have, so, if, yeah. You have no idea what he's been through, what he's been doing. Maybe he's, you know, maybe, maybe he studied with the Klingons, you know? Maybe I it's going to be a she. We don't yeah. know. Could be a woman, too. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. at this point, either. So, I mean, we've had, I mean... Fun things very are in show. store for the show. I do, I agree. I love the show. And I can't wait for season two. I that makes two of us. And I hope it's longer, man. 15 episodes. We've been saying it. I've been saying it. We've Not been enough. Repeating. But it makes sense. you basically putting up the first Star Trek show since 2004. Uh, yeah, something did, like yeah. that. So this is the first show in like 14 years. You want to take it slow. You want to see how people react to it before you commit to it long term. Yeah. They and, they were telling, and they were telling a single storyline in this first yeah. season too. So. so it makes sense that they did do it shorter. And that's I mean, why you so don't want to commit to a 22, 24 episode season, have it suck and then, you know, okay, you're going to either cancel it halfway through or... Yeah. So making a shorter season, first season shorter, it makes sense. Of, yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Do we want more episodes in the next one? Yes. Listen, they're trying to tell a single storyline. They focused on it, tried to tell it really well. Do it really, they, they succeeded at every turn, in my opinion. I didn't. I, I don't think I found a single episode boring. <coughs> and that says a lot. Or dull. And for Star Trek, you know, for someone who loves Star Trek, who's seen every episode there is, that's saying a lot because there are usually a lot of filler episodes. There are some boring ones. There are some. 
Not so good ones. Yeah, one of those they just kind of throw them in to fill up the quota. Yeah. Because, yeah. Not happening here. So, we look forward to great things definitely. from Star Trek Discovery. And we hope for more episodes, more written, well told stories, well done stories. Yeah. More great. I hope they stick with the effects and the cinematography. They threw in a lot of money and I hope they stick with it because it's worth every penny, man. Definitely. Uh, that's, that's it from it. us, yeah. For this week, um, we'll bring in more stuff to you as far as movies and series and anime review goes over the next few weeks. So, if you want to see what it is, uh, click that button and subscribe uh, or join us on social media. Until next time, Bash Bros out.